I have a confession to make. I'm addicted to seeds. I feel like 2020 was the year when people took an interest in things that I have enjoyed for years. Things like arts and crafts and canning and cooking and gardening. Things I never ever thought would become popular and all of a sudden they're popular. This channel has always been about creativity and what it means to lead a creative life. Creativity continues to help me. Uh, manage mental health challenges like PTSD and CPTSD. I think that's going to be more and more important as uh, the effects of this pandemic become more widespread. Part of my creative life that I've never shared on this channel is my garden. I've been growing a backyard vegetable garden for more than 20 years. I started when I was two. Maybe. <laughs> the amazing thing about growing a backyard vegetable garden for me is the positive impact it has on my mental health. It's tangible. It's something that if I don't do it, I feel bad. So actually the act of gardening is really an amazing therapeutic thing for me. So for me to realize that so many people have taken up gardening during the pandemic just is more reason for me that it is an amazing thing to do for your mental health. And it's incredibly creative. Gardening is the literal act of creation. Gardener and seed joined by water, soil, and sun, working together to create beauty or food or both. So today I have a seed haul for you, something I didn't even know existed until recently. And if my ecstatic seed ramblings happen to delight you today, let me know and perhaps I'll do a tiptoe through my seeds. Not the new ones that I'm hauling today, of course they would be part of it, but my entire seed collection, which actually isn't too huge because I have a very small backyard garden, but I grow a lot in it. So let's crack on with the seed haul. I have a haul from two different seed companies today, um, both MI Gardener and uh, Baker Creek. Uh, I have ordered from both of them in the past, even though I will honestly say that I think my favorite seed seeds and seed packets right now are from Botanical Interests. I grew a lot of their seeds this summer and uh, they germinated really well, they grew really well, and I had really great success. Also, their seed packets have the best information, and I love that they uh, include a little picture, a little drawing of the seedling on there, because if you're like me and you grow in a garden that is entrenched with perennial weeds, it's good to know what is a weed and what is a seed, <laughs> because it's not always possible to figure that out. I'm gonna start with M.I. Gardener. And I will tell you that I ordered these before Christmas. I think I ordered them December 18th. Somewhere between the 18th and the 20th. And I just received them and it is January 21st today. Today's January 21st. So I have already been through these seeds. I have opened them up already because my hands are so um, problematic. That would be better if I opened them anyway. Besides, um, I did mention I was a seed addict, right? And that meant as soon as it arrived, I had to have my hands in it. I have a problem. <laughs> it's okay. It's a, it's a good addiction to have. So we're starting with M.I. Gardener. And the first thing, um, you'll notice I have already alphabetized these because I can't help myself. So uh, this is Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. Um, I'm basically growing this more for um, a flower than for grain. I'm actually growing, I'm uh, gonna grow the Burgundy Amaranth this year, which is a tall amaranth, and that one I'm actually gonna try to grow for the seed. So we'll see what happens. But I love the look of this. I won't be able to bring it in the house because I have a cat who eats flowers, and so I can't bring any flowers in the house that aren't safe for and edible for a cat. Lime basil, ooh -wee. Okay, I had to have this when I saw it. Uh, I actually had never seen it before, and I know that there's lime and lemon and a couple of basils that I haven't grown. Basil is the plant that got me into gardening. It is the very first thing I ever grew from seed. When people recommend to new gardeners to start by growing radishes, is um, no, um, grow basil. It's so much easier to grow. I only in the past year have really 
gotten a handle on growing radishes. And like I said, I've been growing a vegetable garden for 20 years and honestly, I'm really not that bad at it. But there are a lot of experienced gardeners who have problems with radishes and I think it can be a huge setup for failure. I recommend you go with basil if you're just starting out. So you'll find I have at least three basils in this haul. I have grown tons of them in the past. I love basil. Uh, I actually have some growing um, over here where this lovely light is coming from um, right now because there has to be no, there can be no fresh basil gap. Basil does not taste the same when you dry it. So there can't be any basil gap. So I have some indoor basil growing to, you know, make sure that basil gap doesn't exist. Uh, oh, and by the way, am I a gardener? I also cannot help myself, cannot help myself. Uh, the back of the packet, there, it, there's a, there's a typo. Notice I alphabetize these. I've worked as an editor and a writer for a while. And like I said, I can't help myself. I corrected it. <laughs> so in the back of the lime basil packet, and I don't know if, let's see if we can get it to adjust here and focus. Autofo there we go. All right, so you see I corrected it down there. You have misspelled prompt. So please correct your seed packet because you have misspelled prompt. <laughs> if it's just P-R-O-M-T, and I'm sorry, I can't help myself, so forgive me. <laughs> there's, I think there's another correction at some point in one of these seed packets too. I'm not growing the long purple ones before. I've grown one, I think years ago, that was called fairy eggplant, which sounds like something I would grow. Um, and they're the little, about palm size, um, and they're variegated. They're white with the like purple streaks on them, more like closer to lavender than this color purple. I've run the, um, the standard ones that you find in the grocery store before too, and they don't do well here. Uh, the bugs like them too much and they just don't survive to get to a big size. So it's better to grow the small ones, but I've never grown the long ones before. So since um, my garden lacked eggplant last year because of seed shortages and I didn't know whether I was going to be able to have a garden or not for other reasons. Uh, I was really excited to uh, get some eggplant back in the garden this year because it was missing last year. Florence fennel. Mm -mm, right? Um, Florence fennel is something I've never grown before. I've grown bronze fennel and I've grown a green fennel before, like for the herb or for the seed, but I've never grown a fennel for the bulb. As far as I understand, this is a cold tolerant plant, this fennel. I need to do a little bit more research on it. I don't plan to plant this in my summer garden. I plan to plant this in my autumn garden. So this would go in the ground sometime mid-summer. American flag leek, another cold tolerant plant, another uh, seed I got to put in midsummer and go into the winter for me because I'm always looking for what can, what will make it in my climate. I am in Maryland zone seven uh, on the East Coast. So um, the American flag leaf is supposed to be incredibly cold tolerant. So I am hoping that um, this will be good in the winter garden because I'm growing onions for spring and summer. And by the time the onions come out, I think it's gonna be time for these leeks to go in and that should work. Okay, that's my plan anyway. And as we all know, plants go awry. Uh, red leaf romaine. Um, I Baker Creek gave me a free packet of seeds, the Paris Island Cost Romaine, a while ago, and I've been growing them, and they are a garden staple now. I will always grow them. Romaine lettuce is one of the things I always grow because I love it, and it's one of the things when you go to the grocery store that's often involved in the recalls. It's something that you really have to pay attention to. And I think everyone can grow romaine lettuce. You can grow it in a small container. It grows really well through most conditions. It will bolt in the summer and you'll have to plant a succession of it. But this, the, the red romaine I've never grown before. So we're gonna see how this is. Also, the cat who loves to eat flowers also likes red lettuce for some reason and will even pull it off of my plate. So, so the red romaine lettuce is the lettuce packet that has another big, um, editing error on the back. It says uh, right underneath harvest before it gets to the little blocks that tell you how soon you should plant before frost. It says lettuce always tastes sweeter when harvested in the cooler weather. Harvesting during the weather the warmer season can and it just ends. Let's see if we can fix this one too, huh?
Red Room 8. We're going to see how that goes. We'll see how Muggsy likes that. Um, Clemson Spineless Okra. I fell in love with okra in college. Uh, our, our dining hall uh, made excellent okra. Okra's great if you know how to cook it. I've never actually grown it, so this is going to be a new one for me this year because I've never grown okra, even though I love it. And I thought if I'm going to grow it for the first time, I might as well go with a tried and true variety like Clemson Spineless, which is grown all over the place. Um, sadly, my my packet had a that month of bouncing around in the postal service mail and not getting delivered, I busted the packet open. So hopefully it will be okay. I'm going to put a little piece of washi tape in there to close it off. This one is one that um, I really, I was worried it wasn't going to get here in time for me to get the seeds started in time, even though I ordered it in December, because it's one of the first seeds I start not the first, but one of the first, and that is the hot pepper. This is the Tabasco pepper. I've never grown the Tabasco pepper. I have grown hot peppers before, and I actually have already um, uh, sowed some cayenne peppers for this year, because this is going to be the year of hot peppers, and then I won't grow them for several years again, because it's just the way I am. Um, I'm not a huge hot pepper person, but I like hot peppers that you can dry, um, and Tabascos are another good dryer, but I also want to use this to make hot sauce, the tra your traditional Tabasco sauce. So, and they're prolific, so I'm looking forward to growing this. But this is, uh, when I get off of here, this is going to be one of the first seeds I start. I'm actually going to separate it out from my seed haul so that I don't end up with uh, forgetting that this was one of the ones I wanted to sow um, now. <laughs> This is something I sought out, but also have never grown. I've gotten much better at doing fall and winter gardening over the last year. And uh, I have fond memories of my grandmother who was grew up on a farm, raised my, uh, my mother on a farm, a small family farm. And <laughs> what I remember about her kitchen garden that she kept up until she was about 80 uh, was that it had two things in it. Rhubarb, which is a perennial, so it comes back every year. It makes sense that you would have rhubarb in the garden every year because all you have to do is plant it once. And rutabagas. She would always talk about eating rutabagas, and I could not remember what they taste like because I've never grown them. In the UK, rutabagas are called Swedes, just in case you're, you're tuning in from the UK. And these are the American top, purple top rutabagas. Um, I'm really excited about growing this because I found one in my local farm store not that long ago and had to buy it and bring it home and cut it up and roast it in the oven to remind myself what it tasted like because I could swear I'd never eaten it before. And then as soon as I tasted it, I remember I had a vivid memory of my mother and my grandmother giving me mashed potatoes and me tasting the mashed potatoes and go, these taste funny. <laughs> and that's because they weren't mashed potatoes, they were rutabagas. And it wasn't until I actually ate that one that I remembered the flavor and was like, oh, <laughs> no, in honor of my grandmother. And besides the fact, they're delicious. So I'm going to try and grow these also for my fall garden. We also have a red veined sorrel, which is also just because I love the name. It's also called Bloody Dock. <sighs> Bloody Dock. Love it wonderful. I'm going to grow this this year instead of uh, the common uh, and throw it in my salad mixes because uh, I love it in the salad mixes. I wouldn't want to eat a whole bowl of it uh, because it does taste like lemons. It would be like eating lemons. You'd be like, which would not be good. But when you throw it in with salad, it's just really fresh and you get this like citrusy burst. So I highly recommend it. Like I said, I've never grown the Bloody Dock. I've never grown the Red Vein uh, variety, but it is said to have the exact same properties as the common sorrel. This I bought for a purpose, the Tiny Tim tomato. Uh, the Tiny Tim tomato is a dwarf determinant tomato, which means it stays small and it produces most everything at once. I specifically bought this to grow in my green stalk, at the very top of my green stalk, um, which is a, a vertical planting system. So I am plan to grow these um, in a dwarf variety here at the top of that and see how that does. I think that might be a good plan. I also have to figure out a way to keep the squirrels from it because I have such horrible problems with squirrels and tomatoes. And last but certainly not least in my MI Gardener haul is the Sugar Baby Watermelon. 
I have grown the sugar baby watermelon before. As I said, I have a small garden, which means I'm always looking for small varieties, uh, things that don't get too big. And I'm just growing for myself. I'm not growing for a big family. So I don't want something where I have a 50 pound watermelon and I have to eat watermelon nonstop for a week. It's not really good. But this, I could eat this in a week, you know, one of these. And so I'm growing both a small watermelon this year, the sugar baby, which like I said, I've grown before. And I'm going to grow um, a melon that's smaller as well. So that is my MI Gardener seed haul. So moving on to our second seed haul. This one didn't take as long to get here as the MI Gardener, which bounced around for a month. This only took about 10 days. And for Baker Creek being so overwhelmed as they are right now, that's pretty amazing. So let's take a look. Aha. As I said, I'm growing a lot of basil this year because my haul only includes three types of basil, but I have several other types that I'm going to be growing as well that I already have the seeds for. I have a lot of my seeds for my garden already. So this is African Nunum basil, and I am apologize if the pronunciation is wrong. Um, I was really excited about this. This was new at Baker Creek this year, and I was really excited uh, when I looked it up to kind of do a little research into the basil, which I usually do before I order most things. I'll do a little research into it first and decide if it's going to fit, if it's going to work in my garden or not. If I should take a chance on it, all those things. And when I looked this up, I was like, wow, they've been using this in Africa as a medicinal plant for ages. And it's basil. I can't wait to grow it. So uh, I have grown a lot of medicinal plants um, throughout the course of my life. Can't really see too well behind me, but this is kind of like my apothecary hot chair. And uh, it has lots of dried and uh, canned herbs and jellies and medicinals and things like that. So I'm looking forward to this one. And since I alphabetize things, because um, that's just me. <laughs> This is um, called Cardinal Basil, and I am actually planning on putting this in a flower garden that does not get very much light. Now, it says on the packet that it needs eight hours. Basil, I find you can get away with a little bit more, so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get away with six hours. Um, so it's a lot of the flowers I have to roll the dice with, and I'm going to try and put them in the one flower bed that I have that's in the front of my house, and it does not get a whole lot of sun. Uh, so that can be a little difficult, but I'm going to give the flower growing a try out there. And I thought this would look really pretty uh, to be grown for these really beautiful, big purple flower pods, heads that come onto it. And then you, it's still edible. You can eat the leaves. Uh, yes, I ordered some actual flowers from Baker Creek. This I actually went to order from somewhere else. And I went on to Baker Creek to order something and I forgot to order them with my other order. Um, so Bells of Ireland, I always wanted to try to grow these. Uh, they actually have the minimum full sun of 6 to 12, so they might do okay in my garden bed with that basil. These two together, I think they look good together. Of course, this one's going to be taller than this one because this comes on spikes. I think it's two to four feet, does it say? Of course it doesn't say because it's a Baker Creek seed packet, which drives me nuts. They just don't have enough information on their seed packets. But um, there we go. And these are going to go in the same. And this, I've never grown these before, but my sister-in-law grew these hollyhocks a few years ago. They were gorgeous. Now they're a biannual, biennial, which means they usually only, uh, it takes them two years to come up. Now they say that you can be so, you can sow them as an annual. I have a little more research to do on these and um, these also says 6 to 12 hours and so these would be the back of these are real, go growing really tall spikes um, so these would be in the back of the garden um, Baker Creek usually sends you a free seed and my seed is Russian red kale uh, which in the picture actually shows it being really really frosty um, because it's supposed to be a, one of the most cold hardy of the kales so I actually do not eat much in the way of kale. I don't grow kale as a rule. I have a dietary issue that means I cannot eat a lot of it and I particularly cannot eat a lot of it raw. So I might grow a little bit of it um, as like baby greens. It's okay if I eat some of it. I'm not allergic to it. 
but I have to be really careful with my brassicas, my um, cruciferous vegetables, and kale falls into that. The whole reason for my Baker Creek order is the Kajari melon. I have been stalking this, I swear to you, for the past year. And it finally came back in stock, and i that's why I made the order in the first place, because these are little melons. They only grow one to two pounds, I think, which is, like, perfectly knee-sized uh, as far as, like, being um, and in, growing for an individual food needs. And apparently they're pretty productive, so hopefully they don't all come on the vine at once, otherwise I'll be giving away a lot of Kajari melons. So I'm excited to try these. This was the whole reason for the order. I actually had a bit of a toss-up. I thought... Well, it, between these and the Tigger melons, but I want to try the Kajari. Oh my, we're, we're into the tomatoes now. I only ordered three from Baker Creek and one was a complete impulse buy. The others I've been coveting for a while. So uh, the first one is Brad's Crazy Cherry. I'm really excited about these. Um, I usually grow yellow pear for my cherry tomatoes. That's my favorite cherry tomato. I didn't have any cherry tomatoes in the garden last year. The seed thing really caught me off guard uh, and I didn't have any tomatoes in my back seed packets last year. So I grew a lot of volunteers from my compost last year. Otherwise I would not have had many tomatoes and I still didn't have many because I have a squirrel. Um, we, we see each other and uh, he knows I'm out for him. <laughs> they have the funniest personalities, but he needs to stay the hell out of destroying the tomatoes in my garden. But I have some hopeful plans this year, some uh, caging gadgets and things like that. I hope to keep the squirrels away from my tomatoes so I actually get a tomato harvest. So, Brad's Crazy Cherry. This was my impulse tomato by the Berkeley Tie-Dye Pink. These are just gorgeous looking tomatoes and how can you not like something like that you know what I mean it just looks so good so uh yeah Berkeley tie-dye pink was my impulse tomato buy when I played this or when I placed this order so this is another variety this is my last tomato in this haul this is another variety that I've been coveting for a couple years two for three years maybe and I finally bit the bullet and was able to buy it this year and that is Brad's Atomic Grape. These are the things that people are buying all over the place. But I'm really curious to try this because I like the tomato size. I think it's going to work really well for me. Um, I, I only really grow one big tomato. I grow a uh, slicing tomato variety, not a beef steak. A uh, slicing tomato variety. And this year it's going to be Dr. Wishes, I think. Uh, Dr. Wishes Yellow. So we'll see what happens there. But I'm excited to try these. I really hope I can make it work because they don't give you much seeds when you are ordering these special varieties. And they're expensive. Um, so it's 15 seeds for $4.50, which is expensive. But you pay for the rarity. In my bid to grow a little more flowers this year. I usually grow some like everybody. Grow, grow some flowers to bring in the pollinators. And I do usually grow some. I am attempting for the first time this year to grow poppies. I think once many, many, many years ago I grew California poppies. Um, but I have these this year and I have the Hungarian blue bread seed poppies. And um, I, I really hope I can get these to grow. These require more sun probably than my flower bed would provide. So I might have to put them someplace else. But if I can get them to germinate, I will find a way to grow them. <laughs> we'll see. There will be some experimenting. But at least with poppy seeds, there are 600 seeds in this packet. So not quite so bad. And $3. Uh, this one is, does not have a pretty picture on it. Um, this is the delicata squash. It's a winter squash. I've also never grown the delicata squash. Um, but when I went to, went to Baker Creek to order this, to, to place this order, I ordered this and the very next day I went back because I wanted to look up this variety because I can't remember what variety of winter squash I ordered. And when I looked up, it was already sold out and I was like, ooh. Am I even going to get it? You know, I thought they might have to contact me and tell me that they didn't have 
the delicata seeds, but I got them. And next to last on the list here is valerian. Um, this will not be the first time I've grown valerian. I've grown it several times. Uh, the last time I grew it was in my 2018 garden, I think. It was 2018 or 2019, I'm not positive. And I, I think actually it was 2019. And um, I tinctured the flowers. Uh, which was great when they bloomed instead of the root because you usually use the root but it's valerian root that you use and they lots of people talk, call this like herbal valium it can help you sleep um, but you can only dig the roots every two years and they smell like stinky feet but most people will say it smells like stinky feet stinky socks you know it, it's not pleasant but the effects are very pleasant well when you tincture the flowers of these um, you just pick them fresh when they bloom and put them in some kind of alcohol and I would have to go back and look up exactly what my recipe is but I remember I think it had it was half honey and half brandy is how I ended up tincturing them and uh, it was it worked really really well it's 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 a mild flavor the brandy helped with the flavor of the flowers which are not quite as strong as the root with that stinky feet smell um, and it ended up being a really wonderful tincture that I have been using regularly um, just for anxiety purposes and in this year of crazy anxiety and you know being stuck at home this is a great thing to have so even though it takes two years to get to the roots it'll still flower and I can collect the flowers and make that lovely mild uh, valerian flower tincture and last certainly not least this was another impulse buy, <laughs> the Purple Prince Zinnia. This is not the only pack of Zinnias I had to grow this year. I have the Queen Lime, Queen Lime Orange Zinnias that I want to pair with these. I just think they look really good. They have that chartreuse center too, and then they're orange. I love orange and purples together sometimes, and but they have that more like corally orange. And anyway, I have a, also a cut and come again zinnias too. But that is the end of my seed haul, my very first seed haul. Um, I can't believe I never talked about my garden on this channel uh, before this because it's certainly a really creative space for me and you have to be creative with a garden because gardening is constantly throwing you curveballs and just like life and you have to kind of create your way out of them. I'm going to be building some very interesting things this year to uh, try to deter my tomato mad squirrel. <laughs> Uh, so I don't have the materials to do that yet and I'm hoping I will have that soon. I also have to erect, um, I'm going to, I'm going to climb the winter squash and I'm going to climb, um, the Kajari melon. So I have to, um, get that space ready for the climbing, the vehicle for it to climb on. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that because I actually really liked it and could talk about plants all day and all night. So if you're interested, I can always talk a little bit about my seed stash. <laughs> so if you happen to want to take a tiptoe through the seed packs, let me know. So I hope you have a I hope you have a great and creative rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.